Let's be real for a second. Most people are building their chest workouts completely wrong. You're probably doing exercises that aren't just stalling your gains, but could be slowly wrecking your shoulders. What if I told you that some of the most popular chest exercises are actually the least effective? Today we're cutting through the bro science. We're looking at the actual studies and the data to rank the best and worst chest exercises for building real strength and size. By the end of this, you'll know exactly what to do in the gym and what to drop for good. The ranking criteria. Before we get to the list, you need to know how I'm ranking these. This isn't just my opinion. It's based on three key things. First, can you get brutally strong on it? To build muscle, you have to consistently lift heavier or do more reps. That's progressive overload. It's the foundation of all strength. Exercises that let you do this easily will rank high. Second, how hard does it actually work the muscle? We're looking at EMG studies, which basically hook your muscles up to a power meter to see how much they fire up. More activation is a great sign that an exercise has the potential to build a bigger, stronger chest. We're talking about both the upper and lower parts of your pecs. Third, will it break you? An exercise is worthless if it puts you on the sidelines with an injury. We'll look at the safety of the movement, especially for your shoulder joint, and whether it puts you in a stable, powerful position to push some serious weight. A great exercise gives you a solid stretch and keeps tension on the muscle without putting your joints in a sketchy spot. All right, criteria set. Let's get into it, starting at the absolute bottom. Welcome to the absolute dumpster fire of chest exercises. You see these on social media, but for building actual strength, they're a joke. First on the list is the plate press, or prayer press. You squeeze two plates together and press them. Sounds like it should work, right? Squeezing is what the chest does. The problem is physics. Gravity is pulling the weight straight down. So the muscles fighting it are your shoulders and triceps, not your chest. There's hardly any research on it because, frankly, no serious strength coach considers it a real exercise. You can't load it heavy so you can't progress. It's all effort, no reward. Right next to it is the hex press pressing two dumbbells together. It's the same flawed idea. By forcing the dumbbells to touch, you're putting your arms in a weird position that takes the load off your chest and puts it right onto your triceps. You're just doing a clumsy, limited range tricep press. It's unstable, you can't go heavy, and it does next to nothing for your chest compared to a real press. D-tier, high risk, low reward. Moving up, but just barely. These exercises might feel like you're doing something, but the risk-to-reward ratio for building strength is just awful. The main offender here is the classic dumbbell fly. I know, I know, bodybuilding legends swore by this, but for building pure strength, it's a trap. The big problem is where the tension is. At the bottom, when your chest is stretched, the dumbbells are trying to rip your arms out of their sockets putting a ton of stress on the shoulder joint. That's where injuries happen. Then as you bring the weights up, the tension on your chest fades until it's basically zero at the top. Inconsistent tension plus high injury risk is a terrible combination for getting strong. There are much smarter ways to do this. C-tier, you can do better. C-tier exercises aren't total garbage but they have major flaws that hold them back from being great strength builders. First up, the standing cable press. People mistake this for a fly, but you're pressing forward. The problem? Your chest is almost never the reason you fail. Your core is. As you add weight, the cable tries to pull you backward, so your core has to go into overdrive just to keep you standing. This means you can't use enough weight to truly challenge your pecs for maximum strength. It's more of a core exercise than a chest builder. Next is the standard push-up. Don't get me wrong, for a beginner, the push-up is king. It builds a great foundation, but it has an obvious ceiling. 
your body weight. Once you can bang out 20 to 30 reps, it's not building strength anymore. It's building endurance. And yeah, you can add weight, but trying to progressively load a weighted push-up is way more awkward than just adding another plate to the bar. It's a fundamental move, but for a serious lifter, it's a tool, not a cornerstone. B-tier, solid and effective, but not the best. Now we're talking. These are good, solid exercises that definitely have a place in your routine, but they just aren't the top dogs for raw strength. First is the machine chest press. The beauty of a machine is stability. It locks you into a path, so you can just focus on pushing. This is great for safely adding volume and finishing off a muscle, but that stability is also its weakness for building overall strength. Free weights make all your little stabilizer muscles work building a kind of strength that actually translates to the real world. Machines are a fantastic supplement, but they shouldn't be your main course. That said, for pure muscle growth, some experts argue that the stability and constant tension make machines an S-tier pick. And that brings us to cable crossovers and cable flies. Unlike dumbbells, cables give you constant tension. Even when you're squeezing at the end of the rep, the cables are still trying to pull your arms apart so your chest never gets a break. This makes them phenomenal for hypertrophy. Plus, recent research suggests that challenging the chest in that deep, stretched position is a powerful trigger for muscle growth. So while they aren't the best for max loading, they are an elite accessory movement. A-tier, the elite strength builders. A-tier moves are the real deal. These should be a core part of your training. First is the weighted dip, but specifically the chest version. You do this by leaning your torso forward, which puts the focus squarely on the lower fibers of your pecs. Dips are an incredible compound movement that lets you load up with a ton of weight using a dip belt. That deep stretch you get at the bottom is a massive stimulus for growth. The only thing keeping it out of S tier is that if you have cranky shoulders or go too deep, it can cause issues. But done right, it's an absolutely top tier chest builder. Next up, the dumbbell bench press, flat or on an incline. Dumbbells have a few key advantages over the bar. You get a bigger range of motion because there's no bar hitting your chest, which can lead to a better stretch and more muscle activation. Plus, each arm is on its own, which forces you to stabilize and quickly reveals if one side is weaker than the other. The only downside is you can't go quite as heavy as you can with a barbell, which makes it just a hair less optimal for developing that top end absolute strength. S tier, the gold standard for chest strength. And here we are, the top of the mountain, the undisputed kings for building a brutally strong chest. There's a reason these have been around forever. They just work. The S tier is owned by one exercise family, the barbell bench press. When someone asks, how much you bench? This is what they're talking about. It's the gold standard because it allows for the heaviest loading, which is the number one driver of maximal strength. First is the classic flat barbell bench press. Study after study shows it creates massive activation across the whole pec, especially the big lower and middle part. It is the ultimate measure of raw upper body pressing power. For pure, unadulterated strength, nothing beats it. Next, the incline barbell press. If you want a strong, full-looking upper chest, this is your number one move. A 15 to 30 degree incline shifts the focus to the upper or clavicular head of the pecs. Research is very clear that an incline press hits the upper chest way better than a flat press. Just don't go too high, or it becomes a shoulder exercise. Finally, the most underrated of the bunch, the decline barbell press. The slight decline angle hits the lower pecs hard, and for a lot of people, allows them to move the most weight. Why? The range of motion is shorter and more biomechanically efficient, it also tends to be a bit kinder to the shoulder joints. For building power and hitting those lower fibers, it's a phenomenal S-tier movement. The best and worst crown.
So, after all that, what's the single best and single worst exercise for chest strength? The worst is easily the plate press. It's a gimmick that fails every single scientific test. There's no real load, no way to progress, and it barely activates your chest. Throw it in the trash. The single best for pure, raw strength is the flat barbell bench press. No other exercise lets you safely and progressively load your chest with more absolute weight, which is the fundamental driver of getting stronger. It's the king for a reason. Building a strong chest isn't rocket science. Your workouts should be built on a foundation of the S-tier and A-tier movements. Start every chest day with a heavy barbell or dumbbell press, flat for overall strength, incline for the upper chest. After that, hit another big compound move like weighted dips. Finish off with B-tier exercises like cable flies to add volume and get a great pump. And for the love of God, stop doing the F-tier gimmicks. All right, now it's your turn. Drop a comment below and tell me your favorite chest exercise. Or, even better, tell me which exercise you're finally dropping from your routine after watching this.